All right, hey guys, it's me again, and I'm gonna show you how I've been casually racking up Scarlet Spear credits. I know some of you guys asked me about this build, so I decided to just put it in video form. And to be honest, I was already playing on it because this build right here makes Scarlet Spear way more fun. Now, it's a very simple build, but it's pretty effective. So if you like fast paced, close quarters action, while also being a tremendous help to your team, then this is the build for you. Now, when it comes to space versus ground, I prefer space because for me, it just seems like the time passes a lot faster. Like, it doesn't feel like 25 to 30 minutes. And space used to be a terrible nightmare, mainly because there were issues with not receiving kill codes from the ground squad, or you just not getting paired with the ground squad. And they fixed all those issues, so space is actually pretty fast now. And since they increased the score you get from space, you can get rank 3 in literally like 1 or 2 runs. So it's pretty easy. Now some of you out there are wondering how does Umbra stack up against Mesa, which is kind of like the damage meta right now for Scout Spear. And against Sentience, Umbra is a bit better. The only time Mesa really closes the gap is when all of her targets are within her field of view, which means you can kind of hit them all at once. But some of you probably wonder how I'm able to get all my health, shields, and energy back instantly after I down a sentient. And this is due to the sentients actually dropping an orb uh, when they die. And that orb will give you all of your resources back, you know, your health, shields, and energy. Uh, but if you don't pick up the orb in a certain amount of time, it explodes. Now, it used to do a lot of damage, but shield gating has kind of made it that orbs not dangerous anymore and you said it'll probably vacuum them up anyway if you're close enough to them so that combined with the shield gating and the 55 percent tower resistance you get from the umber mods and the buff to blocking in melee 3.0 that means umber is very unlikely to die even against the highest level enemies that the event has to offer now your role will kind of shift depending on your team comp mainly if mesa is in your team or not if if you if there isn't mesa in your team you're just dps but if Mesa is in your team, you're support. And the reason is, is because even though Mesa is okay against Sentience on her own, your Radial Howl will give her the advantage, and she doesn't have to close the gap. Though she will have to worry about energy, which you won't have to worry about if you just keep picking up the Sentient Orbs that they drop on when they die. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is you want to hit the enemies with the actual blade part of Exalted Blade, and not just the wave. Hitting them with the blade significantly increases your damage. And because of this, you're actually going to be able to build and benefit from combo, which is like something most Exalted Blade builds don't normally do. So you're going to want to consider that when you're building your Exalted Blade. Now I did attempt to use this build solo, and if I would have used my Radial Halmore, I probably would have gotten all five Murexes, but instead I got four Murexes to back away and I my Applink died at the very last one. So it is possible to use this solo, it's just a bit more stressful to use it solo, versus Limbo, he just sits in his rift. But that's not what this build is for anyways. So here's the build. Now for Umbra, it's just a standard Exalted Blade build for the most part. The only thing you'll notice is that I'm not using Chromatic Blade, and the reason is, is we actually need physical damage on our Exalted Blade to use another mod that I'll show you shortly. Even though we do benefit from combo, I'm not using Surging Dash to increase my combo with Slash Dash, because I only use Slash Dash as a movement tool. You could probably do something with Furious Javelin, but I haven't really messed around with this augment after it got buffed, uh, and obviously you're not going to be doing finishers against Sentience. These augments don't really benefit you a whole lot. Now as far as Arcanes go, these are mostly kind of useless, so don't even worry about the Arcanes. Now for Exalted Blade, a standard Sacrificial build, I have my Sacrificial mods, as these give me Sentient Bane, so that's going to be, that's amazing for the sentience. All right, well, I also have two attack speed mods because I like my Exalted Blade to be very, very fast. And now we have Shattering Impact. Now this is the reason why we're not using Chromatic Blade is because as long as I have some sort of impact on my weapon, I'm able to strip the armor. Uh, and since the sentience are status immune, this isn't a status at all. So this is basically our way of stripping armor off of the sentience or any other status immune enemy. Now I have Condition Overload here, but honestly, if you're just going for an all-out sentient build, you might want to consider Drifting Contact since you're actually going to be using the actual blade portion of Exalted Blade and you actually benefit from combo. It might help to keep your combo up more often than not. And as well as we have Corrosive here because the sentients have fairy armor on them. But since we are stripping their armor, you could consider Radiation. Uh, but I'm just running corrosive since this is also my general use all around her build now for my other weapons I don't really use them too much But ideally you want a weapon that can run corrosive and radiation since most of the sentients don't have flesh anyways Kuva Kraken has been pretty good to me as far as that goes right you can shoot off the arms pretty pretty nicely now I have a ribbon here but ideally you'd want to go with something like a crit build so like 90% here and like auger packed here on the Corinth I'm running this 
uh, f- because, you know, sentients are weak to corrosive, so I'm running a whole lot of corrosive damage on them. And I mainly use this weapon in, in shooting away the Vomvalis drones that get on your railjack and turn off your engines. Now, for the Parasesis, it's a very similar build to Exalted Blade, where you have Sacrificial Steel, Sacrificial Pressure for Sentient Bane on top of its already innate Sentient Bane. I have a lot of corrosive. We have Blood Rush, because we can actually put it on this weapon, as well as Shattering Impact to get rid of the Sentient's Armor. Prime Fury for attack speed, because heavy blades are slow, and we have Prime Reach to easier uh, to hit their arms easier, as well as Rending Crane. Now, out of all the heavy blade stances, against Sentients, Rending Crane is the best, actually. It's slightly better than Cleaving Whirlwind, but you need to use uh, a couple of combos, mainly like Skull Splitter and uh, Rampaging Boar together to get the better damage then Cleaving Whirlwind, but against Sentience, this is the probably the most practical stance out of all the stances. So that's why I'm using it. Anyway, guys, that's all for me. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And to catch you guys next time. Peace.